director is to me a creator who should create with his camera. Now they say, of course, you can't photograph a novel. You can't photograph thoughts. You can. You can. A camera can do anything. Anything you want. I can glance over my, my shoulder just like that. For instance, you are, I'm a kid. There's the scene, I'm in school, and you're the teacher, and you say, this is the, the Crimean War. And I look off, and I see myself in the Crimean War. I see it. I'm running. I'm running with the soldiers. It's, are you listening to me, and I come back to you again? Yes, you can do anything you want. There's, there's no barriers. There should be no barriers. The director's job is to see that the finished story, the finished film and the finished story, is what excited him in the first place. That's number one. He has to have a feeling of visual emotion. Visual emotion. He should pinpoint an emotion and milk it and not bore anyone with it. That's the important thing. The director has a very good opportunity to, to not change anything, to go beyond it. And beyond that, he enhances a change that makes the original story, the original expression, one sentence even, come to life. I'm lightning, Louis. Then why'd you tell me your name was Godkin? Look, blubber moths, you give me back my dough or there's going to be trouble. Adam? What's my name? Uptown or downtown? My downtown name. Lightning Louis. The power of the camera, this is important, is exactly like bold face type. You cannot compete with it. So I learned something I'm trying to pass on, that don't talk about it, and this is what I don't like about a lot of people that make pictures. Show it. Do what you can't do on the stage or on radio or with a written word. Show it. Two words. I rehearse, rehearse, and I shoot once. I like it. I like it. It's like writing a story. You don't play around with too much on a newspaper. My God. <laughs> you just don't. If hunch is wrong, your hunch was wrong. That's all. And you fall on your face. I go by hunch. If, if the thing smells right, I got along great with him. Zanuck, happiest of my life. The happiest. I don't care what anybody says or what they did with him or didn't do with him. I don't, I'm, I'm only speaking my personal feeling. That one was okayed by Zanuck. I said, I'd like to get these two or three anti-social characters on a precipice of crime. Now, to me, a pickpocket is no real criminal. He's an artist. An informer, yes, she could be a criminal, but that's her job. And uh, the girl, too dumb to be a, a hooker, too dumb to be a mistress, could never become a madam, do something for a dress. I know girls like that. So if you want to use her as a curry, you give her a few dollars, buy some dresses. He said, that's great. I love those characters. Now, who do we root for? And that's why I gave him the credit. I said, what do you mean root for? I said, well, he says, these are three horrible characters, but they're so fascinating. It'll be good on the screen. Who now is your leader? I said, they are. And that's the first time he okayed anything like that. He okayed a movie where the people had no taste. The mental and artistic capacity of a petty criminal, I got to know quite a few of them, and trust them very much, very much, Mother, more than anyone in the world. My mother would say, I'll meet you at 2 o'clock, she'll be there 2.30, traffic and all that. They are never late, never. When you want information from them, they're there. They're there ahead of me. They're waiting. Great, great. You've been whipping this squad long enough to know that a guy with my rating wouldn't grip the dame on the train. Not with three strikes on me. They don't care what you do. Very important. You and I are in a bar, that's Charlie. What does he do, you'll say, or what do I? Right away. 
Who's he? What does he do? They don't care. That's, that's their mind. I, I love them. They just don't care. So here is Thelma Ritter being a, 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 a stool pigeon, always arguing with the cops for the more money. Look, let's not go into that again. Look, what do you want from me, Tiger? Do I personally raise the price on hamburgers and pork and beans in Frankfurters? Is it my fault that the cost of living is going up? These are the prices as of this morning. And she sells a fellow that's like her son. She saw him grow up. But her job, her profession is stool pigeon. She gets money from the police department. It's got nothing to do with him. I figure you shelled out about 50 bucks to find me. If I know more. Huh? <laughs> well, Mo's all right. She's got to eat. He never gets mad at her. That's her job. <sighs> we can't find that anywhere else in the world. They respect what you do, and they never question it. And don't you question them. That's it. This, to me, is most important because it's a characterization people lack. When he pulls up his beer, well, that's a safe. I knew a fellow who lived like that on the Hudson. No rent. I used to sell baits. They used to have little shacks like that along the river. I don't know who owns it. I, maybe the city, but they never tore it down. I slept there a lot of times. Keeping beer like that, he had the cheapest fridge there in the world, but it was a great place to hide the stuff. He sees the film, he looks at it, he puts it away. Now he's really interested. It's hard to get information. A homicide detective, 80, 90% of his, anything he cracks is very, there's no Sherlock Holmes, there's no Sam Spade, there's none of that. There's none of that. It never happened. Was he southpaw? No, he used his right hand. He held the paper in his left. Did he? Hold it at an angle, like this? Yes. Did you see him close the purse? Yes. Did he put the paper over it like this when he closed it? Yes. He has to have an informer. And I'll, I'll say one sentence on this. You are a detective. And your phone rings. Your phone. Not a phone in the, uh, in the homicide squad room, but your phone. And she'll say, Gerald Smith, Pocahontas Hotel, room three, Chatham Phoenix National Bank, two years ago, 28,000, room three, and hung up. You just got it. You always had a knack for living in out of way places, places hard to find. It's gonna be pretty hard to run him down, places he picks. Might take you almost a week to run him down. What are you angling for, a side bet? Well, every extra buck has a meaning all its own. It just so happens I haven't got a red cent left. Just so happens I know where he's shacked up. We had two meetings, Zanuck, J. Edgar Hoover, and me, in a Romanoff's restaurant. Hoover was against the picture. First of all, he said, we don't have an FBI man there in the presence with a cop in the presence of an informer and they argue about the money. We don't depend on the New York Police Department who depend on informers to get information, not from the Department of Justice, never. This is at lunch. Zanuck said, what's the name of that fellow that you mentioned before? I said, I'll ask Mr. Hoover, you know Campion? He said, Daniel J. Campion. I said, yes, very man, Mr. Hoover. <laughs> I said, he was the tiger of the pickpocket squad. You remember an old man called Joe Warren? He said, of course I know Joe Warren very well. Yeah. You know Kane? Yes. Well, Kane was there. Warren was not the commissioner yet. And I was in the room, Mr. Hoover. 
And who, who was paying the, the stool pigeon? Your friend, Daniel Campion, who became <laughs> a big man in the police department. <laughs> he was wrong. Now, can't you see how important this is? We just want your cooperation, and the charges against you will be dropped. I think anybody says, I'm doing this for my country, just think of Ben Franklin. And you, he, he, then you shut up. And he's our country, 100%. We don't have him like that. You know. uh, the last resort of a scoundrel. His patriotism. Oh, what a man. Is that a man? <laughs> if it's good enough for Ben, it's good enough for me. Well, you boys are talking in the wrong corner. I'm just a guy keeping my hands in my own pockets. If you refuse to cooperate, you'll be as guilty as the traitors that gave Stalin the Ava. Are you waving the flag at me? What he didn't like is for the man to say, for Widmark to say, don't wave the flag at me. Now, my first line was, don't wave the goddamn flag on, on me, at me. And he contacted, when he was in Washington, Zanuck, he said, I don't like that. So Zanuck said, yeah, let's go soft on this. What the hell? So when we had the lunch, and he's not going to say, don't wave the, the goddamn flag at me. He's going to say, don't wave the damn flag at me. He says, you're getting away from the point. I don't want an American in this Cold War to an audience to say to anyone, especially to the cops, don't wave that flag at me. And Zanuck said, that's his character. He just, well, that's his character, that stays. Quite a few letters on that, on that uh, picture. Uh, I didn't think I was irritating anyone that much. Get that film. The part played by Richard Tiley. He's a communist agent. A communist agent does not mean he's a communist or a red. A communist agent is a man who for a dollar will do what you want on Monday. And Tuesday, if you want to use him, <laughs> he becomes your agent. The man sitting there with the cigar, he's the communist in there. Security isn't interested in all this confusion. I wanted to be very, very uh, authentic about it, because I met agents that will work for anyone. They don't give it there. You got fingers like an artist. Mm -hmm. Soft and smooth. In my business, I gotta keep them that way. And when they stay empty, they get nervous. Come on, come on, come on. How'd you get to be a pickpocket? <laughs> How did I get to be a pickpocket? How'd you get to be what you are? Things happen, that's all. She looks at his hand. Now, this is important. This is what the mentality is that I, I'm talking about, that mentality. And she looks at that beautiful hand. He says, I got to keep it that way, my job. Got to keep it that way. And she said, what, what made you become a pickpocket? And he slams her back. What made you what you are? What the hell's the difference? People are people. People are people is what the whole thing is. The characters of Moe represents many people I knew. Who is it? Lightning Louie Stetson. I wanted to bring out, we have a cash system, snobs. And you can't go to that club, the wrong religion or the wrong skin. You can't eat there, you can't do that. You can't, do, you can't even be buried now. I thought it would be brilliant. I know he loved it. I'm going to stay in business long enough to feed this kitty. How's he doing? Getting fat. I got almost enough to buy the stone and the plot. If you lost that kitty, it's Potter's Field. This, I do not think, is a very funny joke, Captain Tiger. I just meant you ought to be careful how you carry your bankroll. Look, Tiger, if, if I was to be buried in Potter's Field, it would just about kill me. She has spent money every week or every month. She's put down a down payment on a cemetery where they have to screen you. That's how all we've sunk in civilization, where they want to screen you and your background before you dare defile this ground. So so I don't get to have the fancy funeral after all. 
Anyway, I tried. Look, mister, I'm so tired. You'd be doing me a big favor if you'd blow my head off. And that's the woman who had her head blown off because of him. That's the woman who sold him to the cops for 50 bucks. That's the woman who gave, whose life was snuffed out. Same guy for him. And when the guy says, what are you going to do with it? With, with it? What are you going to do with it? He said, I'm going to bury her. He's going to get her in the cemetery. That, to me, is better than any big overall plan. Relative? Nope. What are you going to do with him? I'm going to bury him. Where does he live? He's gone! No! Oh, he left! I <laughs> Where does he live? I don't like to go heavy on violence. Violence, to me, should be emotional, my, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I like it inside. Not a bar fight. I don't like That's too easy. A kid can have Wayne come in and clean up a group of men in the saloon. To me, that's a joke. He went after the man because the man beat up his girl. He didn't go after the man for the United States. And Zanuck said, that's the whole story. That's what I like about this guy's story. That's it. Because nobody ever cared about this man. Nobody. The way this girl did. Nobody. And when she took a beating and he said, who beat up on you and why? I wouldn't tell him where you are. He, he explodes. And he gets the man. I love the high angle on a fight because the close angle is very easy to shoot. Boom, 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 boom. But when you have a high angle, the stuntman, and if the man is doing his part, they better be good. They better be damn good because you're not getting away with murder now. You can see how silly it is if it's not choreographed. And that costs money. And you have to get the best. So when you make your own picture, Whatever you do, put so much away for stuntmen if there's going to be a fight. And just go a whole hog wild and you can't go wrong on a long shot. That has to be rehearsed, rehearsed, rehearsed in such a point that when it's a long shot, you will buy, the, for, my, for my money, the intercuts, the close shots. He didn't go for the United States or for all that phony Cold War stuff because, first of all, they're not interested in politics. They're not apolitical. They're nothing even as close as apolitical. They don't give a damn about anything. You should write with your camera. That's a director. That's it. A director takes a song. That's a few scenes, it's a song, lyric. And he makes a symphony out of it. That's what I mean. And he hasn't lost the kernel of it. Does that make sense to you? Yeah.